So we are going to keep working on the EG33 today. So I have the rest of the timing components here. They got dropped off yesterday, as well as the Hall Tech, which I'll show you guys here in a minute. I showed you guys on the live stream, but if you didn't catch the live stream or you haven't seen it, let me show you guys this. So we pulled out about 4.7 pounds of wiring out of this car when I stripped the harness. So uh, we're about to put that much weight back in with this new harness. Let me guys, let, let, let me guys, gee, what am I saying? Let me give you guys the rundown on what we got going on right now. So parts for this thing are starting to roll in, which is good for us. So I have the blow off valve right here. I was, I ordered a tile cube, but the tile cube is on back order for like six, like seven weeks. Uh, and we're going to be at the fabricator before that. So this is a precision blow off valve. It's one of the new ones. It's the one that ETS recommended that they've been using on all of their cars. Right in here, we have the masterpiece. So we have our Haltech Elite 2500. A lot of you guys were asking what I was gonna be using for engine management. This is it. So this should be able to provide all of the race functions, all of the, this is the brain. The engine is the heart and this is the brain. So this is going to control everything. It's gonna do a fantastic job at it. Uh, we have this massive wiring loom in here with our new fuse box and everything like that. I don't even know where to start with that. So I'm gonna have to look at the wiring diagram, but I'm super excited to be able to get this in the car and start communicating with the CAN bus system. That's the major reason why I got this Elite 2500 was that because this ECU is very compatible with stock CAN bus systems. So that way, when we put it in here, we can actually start wiring in the CAN bus system into that and it should be able to communicate with the car to the point where we can force it into accessory mode which is good. So I want to give a shout out to Connor because apparently this was left up at the mod garage for me from Connor so we have a killer bee water neck to put on the EG today and then yesterday I went while I was up at the mod garage doing some side work I also got these coolant tubes if we can focus I got these coolant tubes powder coated because they were just rusty and gross they're discontinued parts so if it's a part that I can't buy and replace on this car I've been restoring them to the best of my abilities. Now, over here, we have a lot of stuff going on. So we have our timing belt in this big box over here. We have the last idler pulley that I needed. We have our cam caps to be able to seal off the intake cam because it's non AVCS car. I have all of the new grommets for the valve cover, thermostat, bolts, hardware, you name it. It's about to be going on this car today. Valve cover, or not valve cover seals, timing cover seals. So we're gonna get this thing completely sealed up today. Now, before we even start installing all of that stuff, uh, I need to run through here, start disassembling this a little bit, get the crank pulley off, get the timing covers off, which they're all like bolted down temporarily right now. Get that temporary battery out of the car because we were using that for just testing purposes. We'll pull the bumper out and start going to town on this. So let me start with that and then we'll like figure out timing on this thing. I had to take off the valve or the valve cover, the timing cover over here on the driver's side to get these cool and crossover pipes on. So these are what I powder coated yesterday. So the bottom one coming off the water pump just routes up, goes like it bolts on back there, it bolts on right there. And then it just goes right down through here, it bolts on there. That's going to go to the heater core. Um, I don't quite know where that one goes yet. This other coolant crossover tube coming off of the water pump, it goes up behind this timing piece here, comes up right here, wraps up and around, and then that guy is going to connect to our coolant crossover. So I don't have that hose that I have seen yet. Um, I'm probably gonna have to order that one. If it's discontinued, I'll just get like a 45 degree piece of hose and make it work. It's not the end of the world. Thermostats in, I got the new gasket on. Whenever you go to put a thermostat in, regardless of whatever the car is, make sure that that bleeder little nipple guy right there, that little bleed, right there is at the top of the thermostat. So now we're ready to get the thermostat housing on. So originally I was gonna use the OEM one uh, just because I didn't wanna, I didn't buy the Killer Bee one, but shout out to Connor once again for sending it over. So this is the Killer Bee water pump housing neck. I used this on my old EJ. It just routes coolant a little bit better. So you don't have this like sharp 45 degree bend here. It's more radius. It's a little bit wider. So coolant can flow a little bit easier. Now on EG 33s, they do tend to have a cooling issue in the center cylinders. So Hopefully that helps, I guess, mitigate any potential risk on that center cylinder um, on both sides by having a slightly larger water neck down there just to help coolant flow a little bit better. So let's get that water neck housing on. Let's get these plugs in. The plugs, you just lube them up, push them right in, and they go right in. Um, I'm probably going to have to take the timing cover off on that side. I think I have to put those in before the timing covers. So let's get those in. We'll get the rear timing covers back on. Once those are on, we'll start messing with timing on this thing because I still need to torque down the cam gears. I'm not 100% sure how to time this thing but it cannot be that difficult. So 
So we're making good progress. We've got both the rear timing covers on. We have both of the upper cam plugs in. Those just like press in, put a little bit of assembly lube, slide them in, hit them with a hammer. Uh, got both of those on. Uh, cam gears are temporarily put back on right now. Both coolant crossover tubes are on and connected to the water pump. Now it's time to torque down these cam gears. So the torque spec on those is 84 to or 80 to 94 foot pounds. I'm going to do 90. Now the way that I'm doing this here is this is the old EG33 timing belt. Do not do this with a new one. So I've got it routed around the cam gear. I've got it clamped off right here so that way it can't move. I've got it clamped off down here so that way it can't move. So when I go to torque this down, the belt's not going to let that pulley move too much. It's probably gonna move a little bit, totally normal, totally fine, but it's not going to let it move excessively where it's gonna start bending valves or doing anything like crazy like that. So we, we can do this on both sides. This works on EJs as well as with a lot of other engines out there. I just don't have a way to be able to hold down that sprocket as I go to torque it down or else the whole thing's gonna start twisting. So let's get the, let's get both of these torqued down. We're gonna do them to 90 foot pounds. And then uh, I think at that point, we're ready to get timing set on this thing. So I think I'm actually come over here on this side and tighten this up just even more. I wanna get it as tight as possible. So that way we have like minimal, minimal slack for anything to move right here. Do I even have enough room? Oh yeah, I do. Oh yeah, it's working. Bam, that one's torqued down. Let's do the other side now. We'll do the same thing. We'll pull off that guy, pull off that guy, take this belt off. Like I said, make sure you don't do this with your new belt or else uh, you're not gonna have a good time. You're gonna have to replace the belt. This is the last thing that anyone wants to have to do. Let me see if I can get this guy torqued down. So I'm going down, so I need the tension to be up. So I need to put the tension up there. I'm putting it in the wrong spot right here. I'm just being a t at the moment. I gotta figure this out. Hold on, I'm gonna put it on time lapse. Let me figure this out. So I got it torqued down literally as soon as I was like, let me put it on a time lapse. So uh, I put a whole bunch of tension on the cam gear belt right there, the old timing belt. Uh, put another one right here for more tension. And then I got the rest of the tension up here on the power steering pulley. So it worked out pretty well. I don't think I can get these off with one hand. I think I'm gonna have to use two. I can get that one off. So uh, that worked pretty well because as I'm turning it right, I need something to counteract it and hold it left. So I needed something up here to be able to do that. Uh, this just happened to work pretty perfectly. There's no way I'm getting that off. Give me a sec. All right, now that the belt's off, I can actually, so this process works pretty good with that belt situation. If you don't have like a tool to hold the cam gear down or anything like that, I'm sure there's a Subaru specific tool for this that they made years and years and years ago, but I just don't have access to that tool. So to get this thing in time, so we're gonna take this pulley off right here. We're gonna leave this one on, leave the tensioner on, leave that guy on that guy. That one obviously stays on and that one stays on. So this one's gonna come off. We're gonna put this one on last. So this side is technically already in time. If you can see right there, there's that small little timing mark on the cam gear and then back there on the cover there's another one so make sure that those two marks are lined up there's another one on this side but we need to rotate this cam gear to the right our crank sprocket right there is already lined up with the oil pump just for a frame of reference that timing mark is in that is in the exact same spot on the ej25 pump as it is on the eg33 pump so good information to have uh, i'm gonna go through tighten down all of these pulleys i don't remember what they are off the top of my head but let me get them all torqued down i want to say it's 27 foot pounds but um, like i said i want to double check before i torque anything down so let's get these torqued down let's except for this one because this one's going to come off so let's get all of the others torqued down once those are torqued down we get our timing belt on here and get this thing in time so the svx manual says that for all of these normal pulleys it's 26 to 32 foot pounds so i think we'll just go right in the middle call it 28 on the adjustable pulley here 17 to 20 belt tension adjustable bolt so that's this guy that one is 17 to 20 i feel a little bit more comfortable doing that one at 20. That guy's at 20. There's a little bit of slack right there though. Is there supposed to be? Is there supposed to be slack there? I'm gonna try tightening it by hand real quick. I just wanna, I just wanna get a feel here. Oh yeah, dude, that's tight. I'm guessing there's just supposed to be a little slack there for the uh, idler to be able to move around a little bit. We have all of that one. This 14 can come off. It's cause we're gonna get that one on last. So this is just an OEM Subaru EG33 timing belt. Um, same, pretty much the exact same process as all other timing belts with Subarus. So the dashed line right there with the lettering is going to face up and go on the timing belt sprocket. So right there, we have this guy that's going to come down and underneath of our idler. That guy is going to come up right there. Then we've got this one right here that should line up with our timing mark on that side, which 
It does, wow, that's awesome. Then we've got this guy that wraps up and over the water pump down onto that sprocket right there. I think I need to pull that pulley off and get it around this sprocket first and then do that, I think. Because there's two arrows on the cam gears and the arrows on the cam gears should face up when done because when I put tension on this side, it pulls the belt tight right there and it's lined up there. Okay, right there, it's perfectly lined up. It's perfect. I use the mark on the timing belt to reference off of the dot. Now over here, we're lined up. Go up and over the water pump right there. Go down and under the water pump. How did, that, how did this just happen? How did I just get to this point? Now the question is, are we lined up? Hell yeah, we are. Okay, now to get the last pulley on. I don't know what the hell I just did there, but whatever it was, it worked. Now let's tighten you down. Tighten you down. Tighten you down. Okay, it's center of the timing belt. We'll go around, we'll make sure all of our marks still line up with everything. Lined up, lined up. Tensioner's ready to be pulled. We're centered, we're lined up. Uh, I'd like to pull that a little bit more forward on the water pump. Right there, we're centered there. Dope. That was a nightmare, hold up. So here's the issue I was having. Over here on this pulley, I could not get for the life of me the lines to line up on that side. They're like half a tooth off. So what I did is I lined up the, the yellow mark, these yellow marks that are on there, the ones for the cam gears are solid. I lined that up with the line on the cam gear down there and then lined it up with the timing cover. I think I was just half a tooth off when I was looking at it from the angle I was looking at, cause I'm looking through these like little holes up here to try to check it out. Uh, this pulley, put that one on last after you get everything set. Just got all of these tightened down. I'll retorque them down after we pull the pin. So the way this tensioner works is it bolts up right here. We pull that pin, it pushes tension on this pulley, which then pushes tension down on that uh, timing belt. So as the pulley and the timing belt wears over time, this will continue to keep pushing tension down on it because it's an adjustable pulley. So let's get that one pin pulled. We'll turn the motor over a couple times to make sure we're still in time on everything. We'll get the pulleys retorqued down at this point. Then we can permanently get our timing covers put back on. So we'll grab that little pin right there and just yeet it right out of there. Well, that yeeted out real easy. So I can already see that it's putting tension on this. So geez. So let's turn the motor over a couple times. So we'll stick it right on there. Oh my God, dude, that's so freaking tight on that timing belt. It's good, that's good, that's what we want. No, I f***ed up, I didn't center it on the crank sprocket. It's okay, I can push it back. Oh, I don't, yeah, I don't like how close that is. I'm gonna, end, I'm gonna push that back more. So, with everything in time, like this thing's ready to go back together. It feels buttery smooth. I just got all of these torqued back down. Cam gears are torqued down. Our belt has like, that is the most tension I've had on a timing belt I think I've ever had. Uh, this key, like I'm fine with this. I'm comfortable with it. It's not perfect. I'd like the timing belt to sit a little farther back, uh, but it's not the end of the world. It's not gonna come off. It's not gonna fall off. It's sitting behind the teeth a little bit. So as long as it stays right there, we're solid. Everything was centered. I went back and I watched the video. Everything was centered before I pulled the tensioner and started rotating the uh, the assembly over. So I'm happy with this. Let's get the timing covers back on. Let's get all this bolted up. I want to find some permanent hardware for these guys up here, just so that way I can get them permanently mounted to the car. Um, so that way the fabricator can work around them when he's doing his stuff. So timing covers, fluid. Actually, no, we need to tighten down the fluid damper still. Hold up. If you guys are running a fluid damper, this is good to know. This is for both EG and EJ. If you're running a fluid damper like this, the backs side of it sits a little bit closer. So what you need to do is time or time, trim the the timing belt cover a little bit just so it sits flush. Um, I could probably sand it down, make it look smoother. You're not gonna see it, so it's not gonna be a big deal, but make sure that you do trim that down if you are gonna be running a fluid damper like that. So let's get those timing covers on. Let's get that fluid damper torqued down so that way we don't have to take it off. Torque spec on those, I've seen all over the place. I'm gonna go to like 100 foot pounds. That should be fine. That's what I have the one on the 05 torque down to. It's just. Let's just get it on there. So I was about to get the timing covers on and then I immediately realized something. Uh, we, don't, we didn't have our timing belt guide or our timing belt guy here uh, to keep the timing belt from jumping. So here's the issue. Here's the issue with running this right now. With the modified with the modified crank sprocket up here and just the EG sprocket, this engine only came in automatic car, so it was never intended to have one of these. I want to be able to run this on this car to keep the timing belt from skipping or jumping. Now, it came, this is a RevWorks one. It came with a lot smaller, smaller screws, but I happen to find these Allen ones that I have sitting in the back. Now, what I need to do is create a spacer for right there that goes in between this timing belt guide 
and the oil pump right there. So I'm gonna take one of the stock screws that this came with, uh, run to Home Depot, just buy some like small tubing. I have some back here. I have this tubing right here, but it's just, it's too big. So we're gonna go grab some. We'll make our own spacer for that to be able to space these bolts out enough so that way they're not hitting anything. Now I've seen people in the past use like rubber hose and things like that. I don't wanna use a rubber hose on something that could be hitting the crank sprocket right there and just make a huge mess of things. So let me measure that distance. Let me grab one of these bolts. Let me run to Home Depot. We'll find something that's the correct size. We'll get this guy bolted on then we can get the timing belt covers on. It's just, that's such an important part, especially in driving a manual transmission car. The whole reason you have this here, so if you stall the car, the timing belt doesn't jump because if that timing belt jumps right there, um, you're just, you're gonna have a whole mess of problems. So we'll run to the hardware store, we'll go find something and we'll make this work. It's been like three hours since I last recorded, but I got the timing guide on the car. Let me show you how I got this thing on because holy, this thing was, up. It just it didn't want to line up right. So I do have the timing guide on there. So what I did here was uh, I ended up sleeving the uh, the bolts that run through here with just some of the. They're like these weird aluminum spacers that I found at like Lowe's. This is nope. This is like closer to what it looked like when I started. Um, I, I bought an excess of them so that way I could like play around with how I wanted to up drill these. And like when I was drilling these, they kept blowing out on me. So I ended up drilling these with a tap. As weird as it sounds, the tap cut it a lot cleaner than any drill bit I had was cutting it because the drill bit just kept blowing it out. So I got both of them on there. They're both sitting nice and flush. I've got a washer on both sides of that. I guess spacer, shield, call it whatever you want. We've got good gap between the timing belt and the timing belt guide. So that way, if for any reason we do stall the car when driving, it's not going to jump timing on us. So very important piece to have on there. It was pretty annoying to get fit. It's pretty sturdy on there too. Like I can't move it, I can't bend it. These bolts in here, I just happen to have laying around. I honestly think I had these for my old 350Z. I don't know what they were used for, but the thread pitch was right. The Allen key head size was right. Um, I had had to cut the bolts a little bit shorter and re-thread them. Easiest way I found to re-thread those instead of trying to hold like a die was to just put it in the vise and just run the bolt through there with an impact, cut it perfectly, cleaned up all the threads too. So now that that's done, we can actually get all the timing covers on and our fluid damper. We can get it torqued down, but that's such an important piece. If you're doing a swap like this and, you're, you, and you pull an engine from a car that only came in an automatic variant, make sure that you have some form of timing guide on there. Cause the last thing you wanna do is jump timing destroy your built motor and just that would be that'd be awful so let's get this dressed let's get it cleaned up and then uh, i think that's it for timing which is perfect for me I would like to take a second, just one second, and express my frustrations because a couple days ago, a couple videos ago, we were like, oh man, the EG33, it's not giving Tanner any problems. Everything's going so smooth. Everything's so perfect. Wow. <laughs> this has been nothing but problems today. They're not like terrible end of the world problems. So I had to pull off this timing guide. It's, it's too thick. It's too much of a thick boy and I <laughs> up. I cracked my timing cover trying to get it on there. So with that one being too thick, I'll show you the portion of the timing cover that kind of dips down, but it dips down in a way where it doesn't allow a timing guide to go. Keep in mind that this car never came with a timing guide. It's just trying to make things work on an engine that's not supposed to work, but we made it work. That's, that's literally all that matters here. So the timing covers are on permanently. There's no reason for them to come off now. I need to get that crank pulley tightened down, but I can't because I don't have a way of tightening it down. The Company 23 crank pulley tool doesn't fit on here because there's three holes instead of four. Um, I don't have, I can't put the car in gear and try to torque that down either because there's no clutch or flywheel in it. So there's nothing for it to grab onto and try to hold onto. Uh, I can't hold anything from this power steering pump down to this crank pulley because I don't have a spare old serpentine belt. I have a brand new one, but I'm not gonna sacrifice it for this because it's a special one that goes all the way around and then back down and then back up to that. So I, just, I think that's about the extent of what I can do here. 
for now until I at least get one, but the engine turns over and it turns over so smooth. It feels buttery smooth. But the big issue I was having with that timing guide is right there. So I cannot run a bolt right there. It, just, it won't work. Whenever I go to run a bolt there, it pushes down on the timing cover so hard because I have to like force that thing down that it pushes down on the timing guide in there. And if it pushes down on the timing guide, I have timing guides set. It's not touching the belt, it's perfect spacing. But if I put a bolt in there, it pushes down so hard on that timing guide that it just forces the timing guide into the belt. So we're just not gonna run a bolt there or in the corresponding position on the bottom. I need to pick up tools real quick. Give me give me like one sec. So that's all I'm really doing today. I really don't feel like I got that much done and it doesn't look like I got that much done either. But I mean, we got the car in time. We got the timing belt guide situation like taken care of. I mean, getting it in time is, I feel like that's a major importance. That took a little while. I've never done it before. We torqued down the cam. What did we do? We, you know, we actually did a lot. I got the coolant thermo or the coolant temp sensor in. We got the thermostat taken care of. We got the car in time. The timing belt guide situation took way, way longer than I was anticipating it to take. That problem, that was like a four hour venture in itself and it really shouldn't have been. Um, it was just trying to get the, like, the spacing right between the oil pump and where the guide has to sit. Uh, we didn't want too much overhang off of the belt. We didn't want too much sitting behind it. And then when I went to get the timing covers on, that was a whole nother hour of trying to sand that RevWorks one and make it work. And I just went back to an OEM one and that worked just fine. But. I mean, I'm pumped with it. I can't tighten down the crank pulley and I'd really like to. I mean, it's tight, but it's not torqued down. So we made good progress. It is what it is. Tomorrow, I'm gonna start on the wiring of the Haltech, getting it into the car. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing with that. I have no idea, but I have a wiring diagram. So can it really be that hard? Maybe. I don't know. But anyways, that's all I got for you guys on this one. If you liked the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, cyan, magenta, chartreuse, and the color of the day today, placebo orange. Placebo orange is the color of the day. You look at it, you, it's a color, because you look at it and you think it's orange, but it's not, it's a placebo. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up one of these corners, no idea which one I'll put it in quite yet, but, I don't, I'm not even gonna give the spiel. You guys already know the spiel. First EG33 in a V8 chassis. No one's ever done this before. We're gonna make heaps of power. You don't wanna miss it. You guys know the drill on that one. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.